Welcome to chapter 25, Poisoning and Overdoses uh, from the EMT. So, poisoning. A poison is any substance that can harm the body. Uh, it can harm, uh, it can, the harm it can cause can result in any kind of a medical emergency. Poison can be anything um, from medication to uh, chemicals to food to uh, anything. So medications, petroleum products, uh, cosmetics, pesticides, plants, foods. I mean, it can literally be anything and it can come from inhalation, injection, ingestion, absorption. Um, so effects to the body. Um, so is based on the nature of the poison, its concentration, the route of entry, patient's age, weight, and health. So we could potentially, as an adult, take in um, something that wouldn't harm us necessarily. Um, whereas a kid could take a little bit of it and it would harm them a lot more. Or um, an older patient could take it and it would harm them as well um, because their body can't fight off that, those things. It can cause damage to the skin and tissues from contact and suffocation. Um, and then it can also cause either localized or systemic damage to the body systems. It is classified by route, so ingested uh, inhaled, absorbed, or injected. So our own homes and squad buildings should be childproofed against uh, poisonings. Uh, and then we're just going to share per, uh, poisoning prevention information with members of the public during uh, school visits and community outreach reach programs. Um, <clears throat> for a kid, it may be accidental um to eat or drink a toxic substance um for an adult it's typically the medication um, and it could be deliberate as well so when we assess these patients we're going to look at um what the substance was uh, that they took uh we're going to get the exact spelling and transport to the patient uh the patient to the hospital um we're going to ask when the exposure occurred um quick acting poison requires faster treatment and ed personnel need to know for appropriate testing and treatment as well we want to know how much was ingested um you can estimate the uh, missing pills by looking at the prescription bottle so if they've got a 30-day supply and it's 10 days in and they've only got five left we've got issues okay so and then we want to know how over how long of a period did the ingesting occur occur um, so we want to know has the patient been taking this on a regular basis <coughs> if it's a medication um, or was this the very first time that they've been taking it um, we want to know what interventions have ta been taken. Um, some people will take uh, syrup of Ipecac uh, to try and induce vomiting. Um, inducing vomiting is not a good idea, um, so we want to avoid that. Um, and then any kind of other home remedies that may have occurred. Um, and then also, if it was like a, a chemical or something like that, it'll have some type of uh, treatment on the label. We want to estimate the patient's weight or get a, a, a good weight on the patient. Um, most of the time, these treatments are related to weight and also um, how much they adjusted is based on weight too. Um, yeah. So we also want to know what effects the patient has experienced. So nausea, vomiting, ultimate mental status, abdominal pain, diarrhea, any kind of chemical burns around the mouth, um, and any unusual breath odors. 
Food poisoning, uh, this can be caused by improperly handled or prepared food. Uh, typically it's undercooked. Um, uh, symptoms include nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, diarrhea, and fever. Uh, this is one of those things that typically goes away on its own. Um, most people don't call for um, food poisoning. Occasionally they do. Um, there's not a whole lot you can do except to treat the symptoms. Um, activated charcoal, uh, this works through adsorption, uh, allowing substances to attach to its surface. It is not an antidote, uh, it just prevents or reduces the amount of poison absorbed by the body. Uh, many poisons, uh, but not all, are absor absorbed by activated charcoal. Um, typically those volatile chemicals you can't use it on. Uh, contraindications of activated charcoal include that the patient cannot swallow, they have an altered mental status, um, they ingested acids or alkalis or gasoline. Um, those are all volatile chemicals. Uh, traditionally, syrup of Ipecac was the preferred treatment um, for poisoning, uh, and uh, it induces vomiting in most people with one dose. However, it does have the potential to make the patient aspirate, and it also only removes less than one-third of the stomach contents. Dilution. So an adult patient should drink one or two glasses of water or milk. Um, children should drink one half to one full glass of water or milk. Uh, water may, be, may slow the absorption. Um, and milk may uh, help to soothe the stomach upset. <clears throat> uh, it's frequently advised for patients who, as determined by medical direction, do not need transport. So, um, we have this thing called the poison control hotline. Um, it, in Missouri, we actually have two centers. So we have one in Kansas City and one in St. Louis, and it depends on where you are at in the lake area depends on which center you're going to get because you could get St. Louis, you could get uh, uh, Kansas City. Just kind of depends on which one you get. Um, but they're going to be your best resource for poisons and um, they're going to give the um, direction to give. And they will actually tell the patient if they don't have any symptoms um, that are life-threatening, then they really don't need to go to the hospital. Um, and then they'll do a follow-up uh, as well if the patient decides to stay home. Um, you can call poison control. Uh, typically what will happen, what should happen, is that uh, dispatch should get a hold of um, poison control first. So they should ask what the poison was, blah, blah, blah. And then they'll have a case number that they'll send to you, um, and then you can talk to poison control when you get to the uh, patient contact um, and kind of give them a, a better idea of what's going on. Or uh, occasionally that doesn't happen, so you can just call poison control yourself and find out. Um, we're going to detect and treat any kind of life threatening problems, uh, perform a secondary assessment. Assess baseline vitals, uh, consult med control or poison control, and then transport with substance information and perform that reassessment en route. Antidotes are uh, thought of as a substance that will neutralize the poison or its effects. There are very few genuine antidotes. Um, Narcan is not an antidote itself, but it does. Um, reverse narcotics depressant effects on the level of consciousness and respiratory drive. Uh, Tylenol poisoning. Uh, this is a common cause of overdose. Uh, the toxic effects do not appear right away. Uh, they typically are 4 to 12 hours that include a loss of uh, appetite, nausea, and vomiting, 
and then one to two days they may have some right upper quadrant pain and jaundice. The antidote should be given within the first 12 hours and there is an antidote for Tylenol but it has to be given in hospital. Um, so suspected Tylenol poisoning with any overdose um, Search medicine cabinets and garbage cans for any kind of empty pill bottles. Deal with the parent life threats first, and then treatment uh, will be instituted at the hospital. Inhaled poisons, so carbon monoxide, chlorine gas, ammonia, uh, agricultural chemicals such as pesticides, um, and carbon dioxide. Okay, so with these, we're going to approach the scene with caution. We're going to Dawn protective clothing and SCBA if we have it. Um, if you're not trained or equipped, call for additional resources. Here we do not carry SCBA on our truck, so we can't go into those situations. Uh, so we have to call the fire department. Um, we want to know what substance was involved, the exact name, when did the exposure occur, how long, what interventions. Um, did somebody remove the patient or did somebody ventilate the area? Uh, what effects is the patient experiencing as well? Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless, and tasteless gas. It can be caused by improper venting of wood-burning stoves, furnaces, and generators. Uh, this is a common cause of death during natural disasters and power outages. Um, signs and symptoms include a headache, uh, kind of like a feeling of a band around the head, uh, dizziness, breathing difficulty, nausea, cyanosis, and altered mental status. Um, if you have more than one patient uh, complaining of the same things, you're probably looking at something that would affect everybody. Um, so, you know, carbon monoxide, uh, carbon dioxide, you know, all of those things. <clears throat> the patient may begin to uh, feel better shortly after being removed from dangerous environment. We're just going to administer 100% O2, uh, transport to the hospital, and it just takes time to wash out that CO2 or that CO from the bloodstream. Um, we're going to move the patient from the unsafe environment using trained and equipped personnel. Uh, we're going to detect and treat any kind of immediate life-threatening problems in our primary assessment. Uh, we're going to perform a secondary assessment as well and obtain those vital signs. Administer high flow O2 if they, it is warranted and needed. Now, carbon monoxide has a higher affinity to hemoglobin. So your, um, if you suspect a carbon monoxide poisoning, then oxygen um should really be given to these patients because um of that higher affinity of the hemoglobin so it will give you false readings on your pulse ox so the patient um may say that they have 100 percent oxygen but that's because the carbon monoxide binds to that hemoglobin and it uh the pulse ox can't really um make the difference between carbon monoxide and uh, oxygen it just says that there's something attached to the hemoglobin that um, is there and so it can't necessarily make that difference uh, so transport all containers bottles and labels and perform a reassessment and route smoke inhalation uh, this is associated with thermal burns uh, as well as effects of the irritants and chemical poisons within the smoke. Uh, substances can burn the skin, irritate the eyes, injure the airway, and progress to respiratory or cardiac arrest. Signs and symptoms include difficulty breathing, coughing, smoky, or chemical smell on the breath. They may also have some carbon residue in the mouth, nose, and sputum, and some singed nasal hair. Treatment includes moving the patient to a safe area. Uh, assessing the patient, maintaining an airway, and providing high flow O2. Um, maintaining an airway in these patients, if they have lots of smoke inhalation, um, may be difficult because the airway is going to start to swell up and 
because it's trying to protect uh, the lungs from getting any kind of smoke in there. So it's going to start to swell up and then it's going to close off the airway. So um, it may be a little bit more difficult. Uh, so detergent suicides. This is a method of suicide uh, started in Japan and becoming more common in the U.S. Um, it's a mix of two easily obtained chemicals to release uh, toxic hydrogen sulfide gas um, and it's commonly released inside a closed space such as a car. You will see patients um, who uh, have notes written on their windows uh, that say that they uh, were uh, you know, not to open the doors, not to do anything because it's a haz hazmat scene like this. So uh, scene safety. So exposure to the fumes may injure EMS personnel and a warning note uh, may be left on the vehicle. Uh, but this is not an assured uh, type of deal. And you may need to treat as a hazmat scene. Um, absorbed poisons can be absorbed through the skin. Uh, it may or may not cause damage to the skin. And it may or may not uh, require decon prior to treatment. Um, so direct and treat any kind of immediate life-threatening problems in the primary assessment. Uh, perform your secondary assessment. Remove any kind of powder by brushing it off. And then irrigating with clean water for at least 20 minutes during and during transport. Uh, we're going to transport with all containers, bottles. Uh, safety data sheets and labels from the substance and perform a reassessment. Uh, injected poisons, so these are most common. <coughs> Excuse me. Most common are illicit drugs injected with a needle and venom of snakes and insects. Um, and we'll talk about those later on. Um, but uh, excellent resource, poison control centers, uh, information on poisons and signs, symptoms and treatments. Um, and like I said, there's no reason that we can't contact them ourselves. So, so alcohol and substance abuse. Um, many patients have conditions that are caused either directly or indirectly um, by alcohol or substance abuse. Um, abuse of alcohol and other drugs crosses all geographic and economic boundaries. There is no um, rhyme or reason. Um, people in Kansas City can do drugs just as well as people in Max Creek um, and uh, in affluent neighborhoods. So uh, alcohol abuse, so potent drug effects, uh, the central nervous system. Uh, emergencies may result from recent consumption or years of abuse. Uh, we're going to treat patients with the same respect and dignity as any others. Um, this abuse can lead or to or worsen other medical conditions. Alcohol is often consumed um, with other drugs, which can result in a serious medical emergency. Impaired patients can be irrational or aggressive. Um, and we're just going to contact law enforcement if there is a um, safety concern. So something something to think about: Can a, an alcoholic, well, can an alcohol impaired person give consent or refuse care? Um, technically, no. And yes, okay, so it depends on whether or not they're alert and oriented and understand what is going on. Um, it's not enough just to be alert and oriented. They need to understand what's going on as well, okay? Um, many medical conditions mimic alcohol intoxication like strokes, diabetics, um, out, you know, hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia. Um, all of those things can cause, um, can mimic alcohol intoxication. Um, and those intoxicated patients may also have 
medical problems. Uh, typically, some of them do, like uh, pancreatitis or hep C or um, uh, cirrhosis of the liver. Um, and, you know, when they drink, it inflames those things. Um, so all patients should receive a full assessment regardless of suspicion of intoxication. Signs and symptoms of alcohol abuse include alcohol odor on the breath or clothing, swaying, unsteady feet, slurred or rambling speech, flushed, uh, complaining of being warm, nausea, vomiting, poor coordination, slow reaction time, uh, maybe some blurred vision, confusion, hallucinations. Uh, they can be visual or auditory, lack of memory, and altered mental status. Alcohol withdrawal. So this is an abrupt cessation of drinking um, and may cause some alcoholics to suffer delirium tremens uh, or DTs. This can be serious, resulting in tremors, hallucinations, and seizures in that order. Um, so signs and symptoms include confusion and restlessness, unusual behavior, hallucinations, gross tremor of the hands, profuse sweating, uh, seizures, hypertension, and tachycardia. Uh, vomiting is common, so standard precautions are essential. Stay alert for any kind of airway and respiratory problems and assess for trauma. Uh, and then also be alert for any kind of changes in, in their mental status. Monitor vital signs, treat for shock, uh, protect the patient from any kind of self-injury, stay alert for seizures, and transport. Substance abuse, so this is any chemical substance taken uh, for other than therapeutic uh, reasons. So this includes opioids, uppers, downers, hallucinogens, and any kind of volatile chemical. Okay, so opioids, uh, this includes heroin, codeine, uh, Oxycontin, Percocet, um, uh, fentanyl, um, all of those things. It is used to relieve pain um, or cause a state of relaxation. So they're going to have a reduced rate of pulse. Um, uh, they're going to have decreased breathing, uh, lowered skin temp, pinpoint pupils, relaxed muscles, profuse sweating. They may be sleepy or they may even be in a coma. Um, uppers, uh, cocaine, meth, uh, these are stimulants that affect the nervous system. Uh, they may be snorted, smoked, or injected as well. Um, signs and symptoms of uppers are excitement, restlessness, increased pulse and breathing rates, rapid speech, dry mouth, uh, dilated pupils, sweating. They may not have any kind of sleep for a long time, um, even possibly days. Downers, uh, this affects the central nervous system as a depressant. Uh, it includes uh, rehypnol, GHB, benzos like uh, Ativan or um, the ADHD medicine, um, any of those things. Um, signs and symptoms include sluggishness, poor coordination, uh, and decreased pulse and respiration. Hallucinogens, so LSD, PCP, ecstasy. Um, these created an intense state of excitement and distorted perception. Uh, signs and symptoms include a rapid pulse, uh, dilated pupils, flushed face, and seeing or hearing things. Typically what these do, um, so they are a mix of an upper and a downer. So um, what will happen is they'll have this um, up state and then they'll um, shortly after they'll have a a down state, um, kind of coming down off of that medicine. Volatile chemicals, uh, these produce vapors that are inhaled, um, initial rush, uh, and then acts as a central nervous uh, depressant. Uh, signs and symptoms include days, loss of contact uh, with reality, uh, may develop into a coma, swollen membranes in the mouth and nose, uh, feeling funny, numb feeling, or tingling inside the head, and they may also have changes in heart rhythm. And this includes um, whippets, so like um, the canned whipped cream, um, anything canned, compressed canned air. Um, it can also include uh, rubber cement as well. 
Uh, patient assessment may be difficult. Uh, signs and symptoms vary from patient to patient. Uh, the patient may have taken more than one type of drug uh, and signs and symptoms are similar to other medical emergencies. So we're just going to begin by asking the patient um, if they've taken any medications and then ask about drugs. Uh, signs and symptoms of drug withdrawal include shaking, anxiety, nausea, confusion, and irritability, hallucinations, visual or auditory, um, profuse sweating, increased pulse, and breathing rates as well. Do our primary assessment, look for any kind of airway and respiratory problems, um, provide oxygen and assist ventilations as needed, administer Narcan if needed, uh, treat for shock, talk to the patient and keep them calm and cooperative and perform that physical exam. So you can kind of look for any kind of evidence that the patient may have, um, may be a drug abuser. So track marks, um, you're gonna protect the patient from any kind of self injury. You're gonna transport, consult med control, uh, perform a reassessment with monitoring vital signs and just continue to reassure the patient. That's, that's my last thing in our can. Wake up! Wake up! Eric, come on, honey. Chapter five, just uh, mark more. Uh, Wake up! What's his name, Eric? Yeah, Eric. Eric. I have his last name. Wake up! Hold on, hold on. Relax. Yeah. He's breathing. Relax. He's breathing. Wake up! Yeah, that's good. Yeah, there it is. So that guy truck just took off? Yeah, he got them. So we'll take them right out of the truck. I heard something. Did you long. give him one prior to this one or just? Him two. You gave him two? Yep. Gave him one. Right what are we up to? Four or five? No, I just gave him one. That's the one that you handed so me. Is that his second yeah. one? Yeah. Second one yeah. So that's the second one. Yeah. No, he's only got two so far. Yep. He's all blue. I did CPR, but. He had a pulse. Eric, come on, buddy. This way? Yep. All right. You have one more? You seen somebody drop off here? Yeah, it was like a green. I just got back from the snow. I don't know what's happening, but he was here with us. Another drone. Supposedly he was uh, dropped yeah. off here by a truck. He was dropped him and left. He, he was turning blue. She started administering CPR. Yeah, they gave him a, a dose of Narcan. Uh, we got on and we gave him two more. Hey, hey, what's up? There you go. What's going on? What did you take today? Nothing, huh? Uh-huh. Hey, we need to know what you take because Narcan doesn't last forever, so you're going to go back to sleep here pretty soon. All right, we got to know what you took. Good, no, you're not good. Listen, you're not in trouble. We just want to make sure that we can help you out. All right, so you got to let these guys know what you took. It doesn't matter what it was. We want to make sure we can help you out, my man. All right? Good, Eric, look at me. We gave you a lot of Narcan, okay? You were Listen to me. Look at me. Focus on me. All right, you were really blue. You weren't breathing. We gave you a lot of Narcan, okay? And like, like this gentleman said, that's not going to last forever, okay? You're going to probably go back out for a little bit. So what did you, did you, did you snore heroin? Did you shoot it? I didn't do anything. You didn't do anything? You're just sleeping on the side of the road? You're in the middle of the street, you know that, right? You're in the middle of the street and you're unresponsive, okay? And we're just trying to help you. We're trying to save your life here, okay? Stand up. You're not good. You can't even stand up. Hey, you're right on the description, man. What happened? Oh, no, Did we do this not too long ago? Yeah, a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah. How much you take this time? Oh, How much? Oh. It's a lot of knocking in to wake you up. All right. All right, let's go. How much you guys use?
this guy is very lucky when it was all said and done we were up to about six doses of narcan to bring him back so it saves lives and it's a great thing but you know a lot of these people are using it as a almost an excuse to take the drugs because they know they have the narcan there He said six doses, but really it was more like uh, uh, six milligrams because I believe they gave three doses. So.
Paul's bro. You don't want her to throw up and get stuck. Yeah, no. She's breathing. Come on, baby. She's breathing? Yeah, she's, she's, she's trying to. She needs to get that stuff out of her. Yeah, she needs Narcan. Who was she with? I don't know. I seen her laying in the room. I got off the bus right in the middle of the street. That's my girlfriend's daughter. She said, pinch your nose shot, lift your chin. Sorry, head bends back. Come on, girl. Give two breaths. Two breaths. Here, Come on, girl. Come on. Come on, hard. You breathe in. Oh, do your two breaths in that. And now what? Man. Alright, it's already two breaths. She's How long has she been down here? Oh, God. They need to get Three the ambulance here real quick. They better hurry up. She needs that Narcan ASAP. Hard. Oh. Two breaths. Uh, Narcan. Nar. Nar. It goes the ambulance, man. It's Narcan. It goes the ambulance. No, no, yeah, it's coming. Bring her back like that. Hurry up! Hold on, man. She's like gurgling. Like, she's trying to breathe. Two more breaths. Well, that ain't the fucking ambulance. That's the police. Well, he might have it, though. He might have it. Cops are supposed to have it. You got Narcan? Yeah. 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 He's got yeah. Narcan. He got Narcan. That's what I said. He'll have it. All cops are supposed to have it. Come on, baby. Come on. Here comes cops. Oh my God! This shit is giving me the fucking chills, man. Okay. He's coming with the Narcan. All right. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on, baby. Oh, the cop has Narcan, I believe. Come on. Come on, baby. Yeah, oh, the my God. Hey, say it into the That's what they said yeah, when is. I got the That's what they said. There is a pulse I just felt. She's oh, trying. Man. She's they trying. All right. Gotcha. All right, thank you. Come on, baby girl. Come on. Come on, man. Come on. Is it nasal oh, or man, man. It's a nasal, okay. Oh, baby. What's your name? Oh, what is, I don't know. I don't even know her. She had a pulse. She had a pulse. Right. I don't know her. She had a good pulse? When I checked, all right. Her color's coming back a little bit, though, because she was totally freaking blue for a minute. Do you know her? Yeah. It's my sister. It's your sister? Oh, my God. Come on, baby. What's her Give name? What's her name? Tell me. Tell me. Take a time in between and one more big breath. Jesus Christ. How long has she been here? Oh, five been like minutes. Ten, five well, minutes? It's seven minutes probably. Total. Did you call 911? The, the bridge went up, up and then it was coming down and she, she was out. Did you guys call 911? Yeah. I did. What did she get out of a car or something? Was she walking? Oh, okay. I have had a pulse when you were pulling up. Come on, baby. Come on. Yeah, we picked her up and she fucking fell out. Come on, baby. I would do two more breaths. Guys, he's got, he's got this. Here come the ambulance. Oh, God. Yes, sir. She did have a pulse and she was, she was, uh, yeah, she was gargling and okay, trying to breathe. She's breathing. 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 She's breathing.
No, he just did that. He just did one. Yeah. Okay. Yes. She was really blue though, but she her color started coming back when she they you know. She was real blue, man. Were you with her? No, no. I, I was. We were waiting for the bridge, and I seen something. Okay. I pulled over to the side of the road, and I could see her laying on the ground. They were with. They were with her. These people. This. That's her brother, from what I understand, and the, this lady in the black knows her. I just came running because I was, you know, trying to help her. I think so. My guy. Oh my God, this is crazy. People need to leave that shit alone, man. Yes, my sister. Yes, that's her brother, I guess. Oh my God. Is she gonna be okay? She breathing? Once we get her in the truck up there, I'd be going to get another one up. Is she breathing? Yeah, yeah, and she was really blue. Tell me! She was real blue for a few, but she came, her color came back. When I ran up here, she looked like she wasn't breathing. And her, I guess that's her brother. I mean, nobody was doing anything to her. They were just like smacking her, trying to get her awake. And then I don't remember who started it first. Uh, I think her brother started it first. She was, he was on the phone with somebody, I guess 911. And then the lady ran up. I don't even know where she went. She ran up and said she knew CPR, and then she started doing it on her. So two people, yeah. you know, did it. Yeah, okay. Um, but she, her color came back from when I ran up here. She was like blue, like blue, like she the shirt blue. Too good we got. Huh? She didn't look too good. We got. No, no. But she, she looked better when y'all got here from what I seen. <laughs> God, I hope she's gonna be okay. I'm gonna pray for her. Oh my God. Is she breathing though? Oh my God. Jesus Christ, man. That's crazy. All right.
right. So uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, that previous, that last video um, showed a really good um, deal on how to actually work an overdose like that. Um, and how it should be ran. They did a really awesome job uh, from the time that um, fire got there to the time that uh, uh, they transported. Um, they uh, uh, this was actually put on by a, a another educator. Um, but anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, as always, and I will try and answer those as best I can.